Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name's Christina. And in today's video, I wanna show you how to make some fun, easy DIYs for around your home. I'm gonna talk you through the details as well as the supplies I use in order to create these looks. So let's get busy. What I want to do is kind of create this art like where I'm going to kind of string it. I'm not really going to be doing macrame knot cording, which is quite the art. I sanded out the sides as well with just a 120 grit, just so it didn't have any sharp edges. And I'm going to paint wash these. So just basic supplies between scissors. Going to need a pencil because there's a little bit of math with this project. I want to try to make it as even as possible. I made two color washes to act as a stain for these two pieces of wood. One in the cocoa, which is a dark taupe, and the second one was in graphite, which is a dark gray, kind of a black. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on as a stain. And my wash is 50% paint, 50% water. Just using a moist shop towel, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe that back. I decided to put the darker color down first, just in case I needed to make some alterations in the cocoa if it was too dark, but I was pleasantly surprised on how it was turning out just with the graphite so far. I really enjoy using chalk paint as a stain as well, as it's water-based and so easy to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that cocoa on just to take the honey tone out and give it more of a richer taupe. So in creating this wall art, it's all about the math. I needed to measure out the macrame cord so I could make even cuts. Then I needed to also measure out where I'm going to place them on the boards. I measured the macrame cords to be 50 inches in length and I wanted it to hang about 28 inches from the board. So the length of the board is 48 inches. So what I've done is I've measured 12 inches from each side. My macrame cord in the strips that I've made, which is 10 strips in each color, I measured out that I'm gonna need five inches. So again, this is just math based on the size that you decide you wanna make. I made sure that I gave a little bit of room at the end. So I measured out one inch out before I started then it's going to go in five inches, then I'm going to skip six inches. And I did the exact same thing on the other side. I am using a hot glue gun, but you can use staples. And I actually decided to change to staples for a very good reason. This project is super easy, but you have to be very particular about making sure that the macrame strips are even and completely straight and the flatter your surface the better. So just to make sure I decided to go ahead and cheat a little bit by just using tape before I actually glued it on. I found it a little faster, if not a little bit easier, just to go ahead and use the staple gun. And I also quickly realized that if I did need to make any mistakes, it would be a lot easier to remove a staple than try to rip the macrame from glue. So just bear that in mind if you decide you wanna do a project like this. Now I wanna place the backboard onto the front board and I'm gonna need a screw that's about two inches approximately so it goes through the back but doesn't come through the front. I used three two inch screws to put the boards together as well as a wall bracket to hang it and I'm pretty happy with the results.
I love to knit and super chunky soft chenille yarn is my favorite. So I'm going to show you with a few leftovers that I have from blankets that I've made and some fiber fill how to make a pillow in 20 minutes. So all you're going to do is make a slip basic knot first. This is a basic crochet knot and I'm just showing you how to do it with your hands. And if you're interested, I would love to show you how to make a super chunky blanket in the exact same way, just with your hands. So you're going to make the stitches about one to two inches, and you're going to need to make 14 stitches doing the exact same thing as you did with the slip knot. You're going to need to leave a little at the end as a tail to help close at the end. So you're going to flip it around once you've made your 14 stitches. This project will take about one skin and you're going to leave the last stitch. You're not going to use that when we continue on. So the tail that you're leaving is going to be to close the bottom and the extra stitch will be to close the top. Now what you're going to do is you're going to find that little middle knot from your stitches. Now you're going to carry out your next row of stitches using that middle knot and you're going to go from the back. That's really important. Go from the back with your working yarn and you're going to be making 13 stitches because remember you're going to leave that last stitch. Making blankets and or pillows out of this yarn goes very, very quickly. I can make an entire blanket in about three hours. I love the chenille yarn because it's very, very soft as well as washable. So always make sure you're counting 13 stitches as you continue. I always double check after each row and then I also confirm that I still have my drop stitch. So that way as I continue on everything is in process. So you're just going to continue on and you can do as many rows as you'd like, but you're probably, as I say, going to only need one skin for this size of a puff pillow. Because it's so thick, I find it very helpful to leave the tail in the center, so this way it's out of my way. And it's always good as a beginner just to make sure that you found that 14th stitch. The other thing is to actually flip it and then fold it, so this way your stitches will come together a little bit closer and not so wide. You're just going to have to keep flipping it as you go around and make your 13 stitches. Also really important that your yarn is all going into the same direction, so it's good to double check that. It sometimes wants to twist a little bit, so but it's really easy to work with. Once you've used your whole skin and you've done all the rows, as I say, it's just going to be the one in this type of yarn, then I'm going to show you how to close the bottom. So you're going to grab that tail, but the trick is, is you're going to go to the first outside stitch, and then you're just going to wrap them all the way around. Really important just to keep pulling it tightly and you're going to start to see a circle closing. Once everything is fastened tightly, you're just going to take the rest of your tail, you're going to actually poke it through the hole and you're going to make the knot on the inside. And this way you can just pull up the little knot you made on the inside as a little button. Once you turn it, we can now close the top. We're going to put some fiber fill in and it's totally up to you how much you want. If you want it firm, you're going to want a lot. And the trick is, is to yarn with your leftover yarn to the inside stitch. When we closed, we did the outside stitch. Now we're going to the inside. So that working yarn is coming into the inside. So closing the bottom is going to the outside and closing the top is going to the inside and the same thing you're just going to pull it really tight then you're going to go ahead and make a knot and you can stick whatever you have left on your yarn or you can cut it off whichever you prefer and you're going to stick it into the top and you can pull your knot up a little bit and again make a little button 20 minute project makes a beautiful gift
So all you're going to need is a little craft glue. I have some dowels as well as some floral stem wire. And I also have this wired linen cord and all of this stuff you can find at the craft store or even a dollar store. I'm going to go and cut up some paper. You could even use newspaper if you have some. And all I'm going to do here is use one of my dowels and I'm just going to roll this paper. Once I get towards the end, I'm just going to add in a little bit of that craft glue, just very, very lightly. And then I'm going to roll up the end. Now I'm going to grab a piece of that floral wire and I'm going to poke out the dowel and bring that back out. Place that aside. Then I'm going to drop the floral wire inside my paper tube. Then I'm going to use the dowel as my form and I'm just going to twist and the wire on the inside is going to help keep its form. You can make these paper twists any size you want. Mine's kind of long, so I'm actually going to have to push the dowel up just to keep the twist all the way to the end. Once you're done twisting it, you're just going to take the dowel right out, and that's it. I'm just going to grab some Rust-Oleum chalk matte paint here in the charcoal color, and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spray. You can hand paint these as well, but these are perfect for decor. I'm going to do a very similar thing with the linen cord here. I'm just going to wrap it around a dowel and I'm just going to make it nice and twisty. I want the twist to be as even as possible so you may have to push that dowel up so that way you can get all the way to the end and you're just going to make a nice coil cork look. I picked up these three glass bottles at my local dollar store for $3 each. Using Russoleum's Painter's Touch in flat white, I'm just going to go ahead and put a flat base coat on all three of them. And what I want to do is create three different looks using the same glass jar. So for my first glass jar, I'm going to use some paper clay, a piece of cardboard, pencil, and some scissors, and all I'm going to do is make my own mold. Once I had my shapes cut out, I went ahead with a rolling pin and just rolled out the paper clay. Now I'm just going to roll the cardboard mold and then I'm going to be able to cut it out exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to place the mold onto the jar the way I want and I found using just a little bit of water on the tips of my fingers helped smooth out the exact form I wanted to create with this mold. Paper clay is so easy to work with and you can mold and create so many different unique ideas with it. I really enjoy working with it. I just wanted to come up with something a little bit more of kind of a modern art contemporary look with one of these glass jars, so I thought I'd give this look a try. I'm going to go ahead with Rasoleum's charcoal spray paint and I'm just going to paint the entire bottle in the charcoal color.
So for my second glass project, I'm going to go ahead and use the paper clay again, but I'm also going to use the redesigned by Prima mold. And I actually want it to be kind of irregular, so I didn't roll it out to begin with, but I rolled it on top to make sure that the print came out really, really defined. You, of course, can trim off that little bit of excess around the mold, but I actually used it to help adhere it to the bottle, and I kind of liked the look. So with cocoa chalk paint and some white wax, I'm going to go ahead and just stipple that chalk paint on the entire bottle. And this is going to create a lot of texture. And I only needed the one coat because I had the spray paint as my foundation. As soon as this is dry, I'm just going to go ahead and put white wax all over it and see how it turns out. Easy way to dress up a new style. For my third bottle, I'm going to go ahead and use this ribbon, which kind of is like a burlap material, and I'm just going to go ahead and glue, hot glue that to the bottom. Then I found these little decorative twigs wrapped in a twine, and I'm going to go ahead and because they come in a little bundle, I'm just going to also attach them to the little bit of burlap wrap that I have around the bottom just with the hot glue gun. Then I'm going to use that linen wire and all I'm going to do is a wrap all the way around the top and of course I'm going to use the hot glue gun again. This way it adheres to it nice and firm and stays in place. Then just to make everything uniformed I added a little bit of macrame around the bottom Again, just giving it something a little bit more cohesive. And then I'm going to use this paper ribbon and add in a little extra decal. It should match the pompous grass leaves that I'm going to put in it. I have been changing everything in my house and this no longer matches where it is, so I'm going to go ahead and repaint it. I absolutely love the color it is. Repainting anything you've chalk painted, if it has a wax on it, I recommend removing that first before applying a new application of any color chalk paint. So I just use the TSP with warm water and a small scrub brush. So I'm going to go ahead and put a graphite coat on here. I always start with a moist paintbrush when I use chalk paint. This way it moves the paint around a lot easier as well as I use a lot less paint. I'm using a medium size real hair bore brush and this way I can create lots of random brush strokes and I want lots of random brush strokes because of the next step that I'm going to be doing. Because I'm painting a dark color on top of a dark color, I will only need probably one coat, but I'll wait until it's 100% dry to determine. If you're going to use contrast colors, you sometimes may need two full coats. Really important to feather over edges and corners, especially with drawers and doors, so this way your paint doesn't gather and make clumps. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use just plain white wax. I'm going to use just a waxing brush. If you don't have a waxing brush, no problem. Just use a lint-free cloth. You do not need to use clear wax if you're going to white wax. But if you're new and you're not sure of how much white wax you want to use, then I would recommend probably to clear wax first. This way, if you've put the white wax down, 
you're not sure if you like it or you want to take some away, just add a little bit more clear wax and it'll be gone. White wax is so easy to apply. And again, you can use a lymph-free cloth. I generally will go around to edges and corners and really kind of highlight out, but all you're gonna do is just wipe it on and wipe it off. And if you'd like to create a few more highlights, you can always go back to those edges and corners. With all those random brush strokes, the wax now has a low point to sit in. So when you wipe it back, it leaves such a beautiful look. I'm almost done and I just want to quickly show you how beautiful and what pristine condition the original sewing machine is and it's like over a hundred years old. Let me know in the comments below which one your favorite project was in this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you enjoyed. So don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That's going to tell you when I upload my next video. I really enjoy sharing all my decorative finishes and DIYs and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Till then, take care.